up anchoring the night that we got here and then Patrick went over to Immigration and Customs the next day and got us all signed in. Then I'm gonna be honest, we needed like a day or so to recuperate and just like take it easy and do nothing because that was a big <laughs> trip for us and it was chaotic and kind of awful, but we're fine. Unfortunately, a storm is coming. We're gonna get about 32 knots of wind. So we ended up contacting some marinas and picking one. We are docked at a marina just so that we're not out in an anchorage. Honestly, I think our boat could probably handle it, but being so new, we were like, that's terrifying. Let's just get to a dock and secure up for, cause this is like Friday through Sunday. It's just gonna be super high wind and rain and we just didn't want to be stuck on our boat like that. The cargo ship with food came yesterday, so Patrick went this morning and got us some fresh food, which is very needed. We were super out of anything fresh, so I am going through and cutting up all of our veggies and washing and storing them because I think that helps them last a lot longer. I have found that chopping up vegetables right away and washing them in distilled white vinegar, baking soda, and water has helped keep them fresh way longer, which is great because we don't get the chance to buy fresh produce very often on the boat. We also purchased these containers that help keep airflow around the produce, and I think that's been helping a lot too. We tried to make good use of this dock time by getting laundry and a few other boat chores done. And honestly, this was not a bad view to have doing laundry. I also took advantage of the fact that we had a water hookup here and decided to wash the outdoor cushions. I used the same mixture I used for laundry, which is a biodegradable soap, vinegar, and water. Patrick has also been going around and polishing the stainless because that's something we've been slacking on a bit. This was our first experience being in a marina on a dock instead of a mooring ball, and I'll be honest, it was nice to shower and get a few other boat chores done, but there was definitely a couple downsides as well. For instance, depending on the direction of the wind, which it's very windy in Bimini, we were getting pushed into the dock. We weren't very protected from the current of the changing tides, not to mention all of the traffic and being waked all the time. We loved the break and the time we had here, but it was time to get back out there. Really quickly, I wanted to let you all know that we created a Patreon. It will be the first link in the description if you are interested in supporting us so that we continue to make content and document our live aboard journey. We really appreciate you all and your support. All right, back to the video. Honestly, leaving the dock was so much harder than pulling in ended up being, and we were super grateful to have help so we didn't have to do it just the two of us. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Because we are going to be anchoring and not docking at our next stop, I went ahead and got all of the fenders in before we hit open water. I know you've had a really bad day. trip Patrick was okay probably because he was steering but I did end up getting a little seasick not nearly as bad as last time though so we're moving in the right direction
us a couple of hours to motor to Honeymoon Harbor. This was based off a friend's recommendation and we ended up anchoring here for a few nights. Before the blue skies We've been switching back and forth on who goes up front to drop the anchor and who stays at the helm. But typically, if the conditions are really rough, Patrick stays at the helm because he has a way better feel for maneuvering the boat and I'll go up and drop the anchor. Put it back in neutral. This area is full of sea life. Right when we pulled up, we were greeted by a sea turtle who we lovingly named Samson. There's also a bunch of stingrays and nurse sharks over here. So we're anchored up in Honeymoon Harbor and like we're right over on that side, like Honeymoon East. Um, there's stingrays and nurse sharks that just like to hang out and get pet and, and feed them stuff. So we have some mackerel and some spam. We had like a friend tell us that they really like spam. Um, so we're gonna go test the waters and feed some fish. We were over there yesterday with some people and it was a lot of fun, but we did get pretty sunburned. So <laughs> I don't think we're gonna be out in the sun as much today. And we also need to prepare for a sail tomorrow. We're gonna be leaving Honeymoon Harbor for the Grand Bahamas. You should always be careful around wildlife, but definitely keep your eye out for reef and bull sharks if you're visiting Bimini. It finally feels like we made it, actually. <laughs> left the marina, left the North Bimini Anchorage. Um, it's time to explore the Bahamas. Yeah, finally it's time to start enjoying this boat. Yeah. try some mackerel. I thought you were gonna like zoom it in. I didn't know what you were gonna say. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's finally time to try some mackerel. <laughs> the previous owners left us like 50 cans of this and we have not tried it yet. Yeah, we've been a little bit of babies about it. True. Um, I think like traditionally it's eaten on like a dark kind of like pumpernickel style bread. A rye bread. Or rye bread, but I've also seen people talk about just eating it on crackers with like a little bit of mayo and salt and pepper, so. I think that's what we're gonna try. I also have heard that American like rye or pumpernic pumpernickel bread isn't like the same as it is in Europe anyway. So I don't think we could get that experience here. Yeah, but we got some light and some dark crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it White is in it. tomat. It is definitely in tomat. We also forgot to say that we put this in the fridge. Yeah, the previous owner said that newbies usually like it cold as opposed to room temp. Try not to spill it everywhere, I guess. 
on a piece like that or a little smaller? I think I'll go smaller to start. I don't know why I'm tripped up about this. We eat tuna from cans all it's, the time. It's just a different fish in it is. a can. <laughs> so I've like, just never tried it before. So like, what could possibly go wrong? I've also never had fish and tomato sauce though. That's kind of true, but even still. So, mackerel and tomato sauce. Our pepper's crazy. I don't want to go too peppery. A squirt of mayo, I guess. A touch of mayo. A little, I'm gonna give it a really small amount because I have such a little amount of fish on these guys. I eat. It almost looks like a sushi roll on that. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Which one are we trying first, the saltine? Sure. I feel like it's a little more bland. Okay, ready? What did our gut and link say? Dink, Dink it, it and, and sink it. it. Please don't copyright us. Yo, if Rhett and Link sue us, um, no, oh, man. I've made it. I, yeah, I mean, that's what you know, you're a YouTuber. I thought it was good. Um, it tasted like fish. Yeah, it was not bad. I didn't have much of a reaction to it because it just wasn't bad. Yeah, fish and tomato sauce. I think we lucked out. We lucked out? Yeah, because we have like 50 cans of it. <laughs> that we like it. <laughs> People also recommended using this fish bait. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mmm. He loves it. It's good. I would definitely recommend it. And I'm not just saying that to appease our Danish audience. <laughs> it's growing on me. It's not like my favorite thing in the world, but it's definitely not bad. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a little acquired, like I don't think it's an acquired taste, but it's certainly like a little different than like anything I've eaten growing up. I'm gonna try it with a little egg. You're gonna put egg salad with it? He's going wild. Uh, well, he said the previous owner. Uh, he said, probably just say Casper. His name's Casper. We huh? just call him Casper. We love him. <laughs> um, such a nice man. His whole family's fantastic. Um, anyway, he said people eat it with boiled egg. Okay. And like, what's That's not just a boiled egg though? Yeah, but it's like a boiled egg, but also mayo. So I was trying to save us a step. <laughs> How is it? Good. I'm here for it. <laughs> All right, give me some egg salad. I think I like it with the saltines more. Look at this weirdo saltine. Do you see Jesus in it or something? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, hold on. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, well now we have to like, uh, we're gonna have to figure out how to get more. We have 50 cans. Yeah, I know. New favorite delicacy though. Well, we'll just be, we'll be the boat um, where like everybody's always handing out cups and stuff. We'll, we'll just hand out mackerel. mackerel and tomatoes. Oh cool. That was maybe a little underwhelming. <laughs> Except it's good. So you so, should try it. If so you, you should it. try it. I don't know where you can buy it in the States. If we run into you, ask us for a can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pa Patreon subscribers, just if you find us, you get a can of mackerel. <laughs> Fish, probably salt and pepper, and then he just his <laughs> mayonnaise on top. <laughs> Sorry, I, I shouldn't use that word. <laughs>